Welcome to this house, to this safe place, where God is everything among men, where men walk freely among him. We welcome you here. We welcome you in the church. And this is what we do. The history of New Life really began back in the 1990s when I met Kevin Turpin as a fellow graduate student at Regent University and we were taking a class together and became friends and began to study together a little bit and began to dream what it would look like if we pastored a church together that was intentionally multi-ethnic. And by the providence of God, two years later, in June of 1999, we launched New Life at Indian River High School with the intentional purpose of being a multi-ethnic church. Now the core values of worship and prayer and the word were there, but we, we set off on the task of having a church of all nations, all cultures, all peoples. And so now our church has four campuses at three locations and God continues to add numbers to our ministry, but it's not about the numbers. Our influence has gone from a small influence now to a nationwide influence, and we just are excited what God has done in our short history. We reach, we go, we extend our arms and we show love. We know love. So we cannot cower in secret as if to hold on to a gift that was meant for more than just us. We are on assignment to pierce through the darkness and salvage the broken. We cannot sit and be content with not helping the hopeless, the unbeliever, the rokish, the impoverished, the voiceless. We long to see them whole and that is why we go. We long to see them sheltered. We long to see them better. We long for the day when they and us have become what we call together. We have every intention to bring God to the nearest soup kitchen and see his name lifted from America to the areas of our third world missions. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And even if we cannot get them to be a part of our congregation, still there will be no hesitation in stating our cases, planting our seeds and meeting the needs. We are following the one who has urged us with a deep, holy, compelling to go. The idea of being a missional church comes from the idea of missio dei, which is a Latin phrase which means the mission of God. Does God have a mission? Yes, he does. The scripture says that God sent his son on a mission to save our souls. And then Jesus sent a, the Holy Spirit on a mission to empower the church. So God the Father sends the Son, the Father and the Son sends the Holy Spirit, and now the whole Godhead sends the church. We are sent by God into the world to bring God's mission, God's gospel, God's saving knowledge to the nations from our neighborhood all the way to the uttermost and the outermost. The heartbeat, the vision of New Life Providence Church is to be a church of all nations that glorifies God. And part of that vision is to be a multi-ethnic church, a house of prayer, a house of worship, and a house of the word. Recently, God's been adding to that vision. He is saying that we're, we've been made a large church for the purpose of having a large influence. So our vision isn't to be big. Our vision is to advance the kingdom, to have kingdom influence throughout Hampton Roads, Virginia, and the whole world. Being missional is so important to the church because it gives us a focus for our purpose and aligns all the vision, activities, and purposes for us belonging to a local church. The outworking of our vision is this idea of establishing five campuses in five years. Now currently we have four campuses at three locations but by God's grace we want to add a campus a year until every city in the Hampton Roads Metroplex has a extension, a campus of our church. The idea is this, you don't have to come to New Life and drive a long distance. We're bringing the church to you. We're bringing life groups, 
a campus, ministries, believers to your part of the city until everybody in Hampton Roads hears the gospel by the lips of somebody from New Life Providence Church, we're going to expand the church. And we do not divide. We do not section off one race of people as the one and only bride. We have all and we have peace. We celebrate every beauty. We are the face of the house of God. We make this multi-ethnic truth evident for all to see. Banners draping the ceilings of our edifices. People filing in like rainbows at every one of our campuses. Our seats are stained with color. Our hearts are moved by each other. We take it serious, the love we have for one another. Because when he created us, he went heavy on the color. So therefore we will stand together understanding that there is godly intention behind every tongue and tribe, every people and nation. This is the picture of heaven's eternal generation. Take some of them, some of him, her, and you, and you will then have the chosen hue. At the heart of the gospel is that God has made a way through Christ for all people to come to know him. It's a natural outflow of that then that the local church should be made up of all people. We're committed as New Life Providence Church to be a multi-ethnic church, a church of all nations, all tongues, all tribes, all backgrounds, treating one another as equals, loving one another as brothers and sisters. This is our prophetic vision. This is the reason the church started, and this is what's gonna propel us into the future. I believe that God has raised us up as a large church to have a large influence. And part of our large influence is to season the broader body of Christ with what a local church can look like if it truly commits to be multi-ethnic. Loving one another in Christ is a transforming community. Then comes the heart of the matter, the practice that becomes habit and keeps us together. This pursuit, this perpetual conversation we are having with the Father, the call and the response this transformative custom. It is how we've all come from however far we've begun. We pray. We have found new meaning in seizing the day, rising early on Wednesdays and Fridays to wait at Papa's feet, sitting, soaking in silence as we rest and he speaks. Every day, Every week, we stand as watchmen in our very own house of prayer, and God is surely there, reviving and enlivening, providing and setting all things right. Praying to God is the abundant life. Prayer is change coming true. Prayer is hearing what to do. Prayer is all things new. Prayer is God revealed. Prayer is thousands of tiny fires burning inside of thousands of passionate souls who seek, meditate, contend, give reverence, and listen all day, every hour, every day of the week, because we are being pursued. New Life Providence Church started in prayer, has grown in prayer, and has stayed in unity in prayer. I believe you can gauge the health of a local church by the attendance and vibrancy of a local prayer meeting. So corporate prayer is probably the single most important litmus test of our vibrancy as a church and our health as a church. And really you could say even the potential of our church moving forward. I look back at the blessings of God in our church over the last 14, 15 years, and all of it I believe can be directly related to the fact that the church prays morning prayer, evening prayer, soaking prayer, intercession, prophetic prayer, petitioning prayer, pre-service prayer, the list goes on and on and on. And I believe our future is hinged on our ability, desire, and follow through of continuing to be a house of prayer. I believe this is our vision, this is our purpose, to be a house of prayer for all nations. And so we plant our flags and we make our moves going deeper and higher every round go, deeper than a color of skin, becoming active in our own world and advancing into the third worlds, becoming more intentional with the light of the gospel that we bear, stretching our hands and feet wherever we can, called to be in relationship with the person of Him, 
until our devotion looks something like a heartbeat, pounding with an aggressive motivation to see Jesus Christ revealed to every nation on every street corner and building and media space. We go, we glow, we fight, we pray, the church. I believe God is speaking to our church. I really do. I know he's speaking to me. Are we going to reminisce about what God has done in our church the last 15 years? The mir miracles that have taken place, the miraculous interventions of God? Or are we going to have a vision for the future? What God can do in us? That we can be salt and light in a community, a multi-ethnic church that really does love one another. A church that really does pray. A church where every man and woman are baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, well trained, and they go out into the world as missionaries. And we pick the high hanging fruit. We're not competing with other churches. Our church exists to reach the souls of men that no one else will reach. I believe that God is asking us, will we sign up? Will we be a people of intentionality? Will we relent from our comforts and stretch ourselves in faith? Will we swing for the fence? Will we try new things? Will we innovate? Will we create? Will we prophesy? Will we go where no one's ever gone before? Will you go past your own self-limitations and insecurities and passivities and fears? And will you say, as David said, I was born for such a time as this. Can we dream for what the church can really be? Or do we want to be content with where we are at today? I'm not content. I want to achieve everything that's possible for us to achieve. We want to be a church where God's glory is witnessed here and in the nations. God bless you.